If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this exciting episode oh, yeah. of Mind Pump, uh, in the beginning, we talk, uh, we do a little bullshitting like we normally do. We talk about yeah, a company called Socius uh, that we actually, on air, uh, discovered that we really liked. Yeah. Uh, we talk about a, cause. a post that I did on Instagram about post-workout nutrition. You're not going to want to miss that. Actually uh, blowing some minds Throwing over here. some knowledge. About how you may want to not engage in the post-workout nutrition. Now, those of you that dig the science and don't like the bullshit and skip to all the questions, this is one you're going to want to listen oh, to. All yeah. You science there. heads, here you go. Definitely. Um, and then Adam, I, I feel like I need to mention this. Adam talks about uh, a protein powder company that he likes to use Organifi. I actually uh, don't mind their products as well. It's one of the only protein powders I can tolerate. And uh, we have a discount code for you if you do want to get it. Just type in Mind Pump uh, when you order Organifi protein and you will get a discount. Doug, is that Organifi.com? What's the, yeah, Organifi.com. Excellent. Then we get into the questions. The first question was what we think about anti-glycolytic training. Does it sound complicated? It should. They designed it that it? way. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Then we talk about T Nation writing an article on building workouts based on your neurological profile. We actually like T Nation quite a bit, even mm. though we think they copy us sometimes. Maybe. We have big egos. Then we talk about physical body adaptations you'll probably get from training with a steel mace and club. My favorite. Not a steel mace in the club. <laughs> They're actually called clubs Stupid. themselves. Always the dad jokes. Finally, how does your sleep posture affect your imbalances and mobility? How big of an impact does it have? And what can you do in your sleep to maximize your total wellness, muscle building, and fat loss? Hmm. Finally, this month, we are running one of my favorite promotions. We're giving private forum access away for free. For any of the MAPS programs. Any program you enroll in, you'll get access to our private forum absolutely free. Now, on our forum, we have uh, competitors on there, stage competitors, bodybuilders, physique Doctors, PTs, nurses. You got it all on there. And all and me, Adam, and Justin are on there uh, yeah, every single there. day um, answering questions, uh, assessing people's form. If you have questions on your MAPS training or other types of training, we have CrossFitters on there. It's Plus a, September 1st, this is going up. Yeah. So not only are you getting hooked up if you get any of the MAPS programs for free, and it's an amazing community that we've built in there. On top of that, the price is going up in September. So yeah, so this is a good, good time. time. Good time to enroll. Free forum access. Enroll in any MAPS program. The place to do it is mindpumpmedia.com. Have an edible or have be a little, have a state change to have uh, to us calm our nerves down. Mm -hmm. And then I started to notice... I was stupid and I was missing a lot of words, I, <laughs> right? Like more than normal. You were stupid. So <laughs> then I then I couldn't have anything. So then we went like we did hundreds of episodes yeah. since then. Now I think I'm so comfortable doing this and we've been doing this for so long that being medicated a little bit actually yeah. kind of lightens. Does it help you? It does. It lightens, mm. it lightens up a little bit. <laughs> it, it lightens up a little bit. Brings us to fun town. But I, I, am, I, am, I am liable to do... A, a, at least one rambling session because I catch myself doing because really? I get all uh, and I, I caught the other day it was so funny I went to tell you this I was getting all passionate about something we were talking about I don't remember what it was but it was because I was medicated and I looked mm -hmm. over I looked over you and I, and I had sucked you into the story so much and I was I was circling the wagon. I was done. And I was like, look, I'm like talking, yeah. like looking at you. Sal, like, Sal come in here, get come me on. out, get me out of here, <laughs> take me out of this, yeah. <laughs> this dream. But I also know that I was I was speaking so passionately that I had pulled you yeah. in. You were like this, like listening, hanging oh, on every word. I wonder when he's gonna stop. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, get me out of here. Either that, or I was thinking to myself, like, let's see how long this goes. <laughs> just, just make him sweat. Which yeah, that's yeah. the other thing I think you're doing. So you're now. like, I'm gonna let him go because real soon here he's gonna make up a word. This will be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, See what 30 more seconds and he epic. makes up a word. I guarantee it. No, I get... Uh, we'll see over under on it. I, you know, I'm not... I, I usually don't do anything before we record because what I do, I'll get really fucking passionate about shit and sometimes get too passionate. What I mean is... That's what I mean I'll by... I'll have it. an idea about something, like a concept, 
yeah. that sh- I should exercise restraint when I talk about. Mm. But instead, I'm like, for like, sure, this, this is, is the is, way. This is it. Yeah, oh, I just had a crazy realization. Yeah. And um, and then mm. I listened to the episode. And I'm like, Ooh, like, wait a minute. That's not true for everybody. So did anybody look at, did you look into these hats that were sent to us? No. no. So on the, on the bottom, it says, wear it forward. Wear it forward. Yeah, I don't know if that is that like a pay it forward type of business. I feel like, or a, are they just saying like, stop wearing so, your hat backwards like an asshole. No, I don't think it's that. Yeah, I think that. No, I know it is. Who started that trend? The hair, the hat backwards trend. I don't know. Oh my the, god, the first hat Fred back- Durst is. <laughs> He, he rocked it for a long time. Yeah, what was that? What, why? Before Fred Durst. I don't back, know. That was just how he did it. Backwards hats. God, where, who did popularize yeah, backwards I hats? I feel like it was Was skaters. it hip hop or was it skaters? I think it was skaters. What? It was it so, someone was like, hey, yeah. my neck. Hip hop wasn't as popular when skating does. was yeah coming in. Nobody really wears a hat backwards anymore, do they? I do every once in a while. Do I you? do all the time. Yeah, yeah. Justin does too. Yeah. I do too. It Couple. depends on the type of hat, right? You know, you got, pro- I was just—I've been wearing this one all morning backwards. Yeah. You have? Yes. I, I just, just don't notice. I just—I know you don't. I just yeah. don't. Know. I just—I wish I looked good in a hat. I don't. It just doesn't work with me. Well, it's probably you I look, look like a it's kid. Not your thing. I yeah. look like a kid. You got to find certain like you're I can too, only you're too narrow. I can only wear yeah. I can only wear certain styles because certain styles I look like a bit, like you look like a big clown hat on me. Do it. You really? got to find you have to find like fitted small. Does it look like a clown hat on me when I wear a hat? Kinda. Have you guys even seen me in a hat? Yeah, we have. Of We've course. seen it. It's funny. It, ha- it happened. All right. Justin did. A, Justin described it before, where you have this like, uh, yeah. Oh shit! They posted <laughs> me. Yeah. Oh what look at that. It? Adam. Adam got randomly posted uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. in a cloud of smoke. Wow. Yeah, they're working the- with Justin Wren. Oh, they are. Yeah, uh, with the water project. Oh, I didn't awesome. know, I didn't oh, know that. I feel, cool. Now I feel bad for you know. No, I, give him a shout out. Well, I I tagged him after. Socius, the, give him a shout out. Yeah. So can we read about him before? So we so we know what we're shouting out here. Is it oh, like, you know why? Here it is. Wear it forward, forward. Every item purchased helps provide one person in need with clean drinking water. If they're working with Ren, then they're awesome. We already, that, li- we already like you. Because that dude is... Uh, yeah. I've never met a person that um, just... Genuinely passionate. Like so, a gentle soul. I met... You know okay, I mean? so... Okay, since we're doing it now, we're officially shouting them out... Um, I felt bad because we got the we get boxes of stuff all the time and when ninety nine percent of the time we don't even wear it or check it out or do anything. Yeah. And I gotta get I, rid of shirts. I spilt my cup of coffee. I spilt my chimera on me after, <laughs> the other morning and I was like, fuck, it was a white shirt. And I was like, I was looking through the boxes oh, of stuff man. that and I was like, Oh, I found this and it's a and I, I pulled it out and I'm like, Okay, this is cool. You know, I don't even know what it's for. I put it on and I'm like, Oh, this yeah, is a comfortable I shirt. I didn't know what that word meant. Yeah, I didn't even know what socius was. And I was like, oh, this is this is cool. So my bad for not shouting you guys out and tagging you. I was not attached to you guys on Instagram. I am now. Love the idea. Love Justin Wren. So uh, here's your official shout out for the business. It's Socius, S-O-C-I-U-S. Uh, and for every cli- clo- la- 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 piece of clothing. There it is. <laughs> right? There it is. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. For every piece of clothing la- 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 la. item that you purchase, whether it be a shirt or a hat, uh, that provides one person a lifetime mm-hmm. of clean water. Mm-hmm. That's fucking cool, man. I, I like it. I I uh, also buy anything of theirs if they're working with him. That's right. The thing. Yeah, yeah. No. I. I. We all have so much respect for Justin. Uh, so the fact that you're tied with that guy doing good things, uh, we love it. Uh, we'll support your guys' cause. By the way, we don't. Uh, those that are listening to, we we don't get anything paid or any of that shit for mm-hmm. this. This is just literally. This is how this. I found this out was. Yeah. I spilled coffee on my shirt and needed a shirt. I was scrambling around the studio, found a box that had been shipped to us, and this is it. Funny how things like that happen. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't mind shouting them out at all. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you guys saw my Insta story yesterday. I did not realize it would create. Uh, oh, well, I kind of did. So glad you dropped that. Oh, what you want, bro? You you got to sl- see. Here is something I got. Here is your Instagram tip for me. Mm. Too much knowledge, too fast. Ooh. Too much, bro. Came in too hot. Back to back posts that are like paradigm shattering things for people. That's too much. I got to spread them you out. You got to spread that out. You got a right. week for people to digest that first one, debate it, research themselves, All get right. mad about it, tag their favorite fitness professional that's been touting that bullshit for years. You got to give them that time. You can't go boom, paradigm whack. shattering. Whack. Next day, whack, whack, whack again, whack. another one. Yeah. You can't do that. You know what? You're the, karate chopping everybody too hard. You know what it is, dude? It's it's you're literally peering into my mind. Imagine being me where I go through these spurts of like 
yeah. mania where I'm like, ah, and You're just then sprinting through and knowledge. then nothing yeah. for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's so annoying to people around me. I know it is. My poor girlfriend, where I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. okay, like, calm yeah. down, calm I down. I feel calm like down. yeah, my my hair would be so. Blown and back. then for a week, she's like, why aren't you? There's nothing. Your brain is not working anymore. I'm like, I have no yeah, idea. I'm so clear. that being said, the the business side of you learns to be strategic about that because you know those patterns about yourself, and you're like, oh my god, I am just full of all this knowledge right now you get a backload it yeah let me it. let me let me write about this but i'm not going to share it till next week i, I can't yeah. do that i can't do <laughs> that share it Bro, now while it's hot it's like when i Strike buy while the, the griddle's hot it's like when i buy a present for someone because their birthday is going to be next week mm. you're going to get the gift today well so can there's we, no way i'm going to hold that so can we agree right now we're only talking <laughs> about one of those two because both of those in my opinion are big okay uh, both, both the food both the anabolic window and the hip thrust thing, yeah. in my opinion, are huge things to talk about, and we're not talking about both. Well, you only get one. All right, I want to talk mm. about the post workout uh, you okay. know, thing. With yeah, that's so, a good one. So that it's a huge one. It's a massive, massive. one. This was very. This shattered. This was when we were lit, uh, interviewing the boys just on Thrive. Yeah. Right? So so we or talk, before them Iron Radio. Well, first it started with um, Dr. Ruscio. Right. Dr. Uh, Ruscio is a gut health uh, specialist who we respect tremendously he's our resource when it comes to that and me and him were having a conversation a while ago about uh things that can affect poorly affect uh gut health or things that can cause problems with you and one of the things he mentioned to me was how uh first off intense exercise the over application of intensity was very strongly connected in countless studies to poor gut health um, and this is actually established this there's no debate with this whatsoever i've known about this for a while that one of the negative side effects of overtraining or doing too much is that you you end up developing uh, or have higher risks of developing gut problems, inc- including food intolerances. And uh, a lot of this has to do with the inf- inflammatory things that you produce. We're now showing that uh, your microbiome in your gut is affected negatively uh, while you're in this state of overtraining and uh, gut permeability changes and all that stuff. So that that's one thing that I already knew about, but he kind of hammered home. But then we talked about something that was really mind blowing. He said, you know, the worst time that you can eat if you have uh, gut problems or you have sensitive gut issues is right after you work out. Um, and he explained why. And uh, Which when he explained this, it was like, so duh, right? Uh, it made so much sense that I was like, how have I not put this together before? And it's because, like everybody else, I've been brainwashed for so many years. Even though we've dispelled the whole anabolic window on the show already, that it's eh, it's the 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 benefits that you're getting is so minute that it's not worth focusing on. So we've already kind of said that, but it's not just not worth focusing on. It should be avoided potentially for a lot of people. It should. So the, the, the post-workout window, that anabolic window is actually a myth. It doesn't, it really doesn't exist. It, it, you will replenish glycogen faster if, because you ate. So it really doesn't matter when you eat, whenever you eat, then you start to replenish glycogen faster. Really the only benefit is if you are going to work out again in a few hours. So you need to have glycogen to be able to perform again. Otherwise it doesn't really make a difference. However, if you are already in an inflamed state, if you already have a sensitive gut, uh, intense exercise causes uh, changes in gut permeability, meaning there's a cell wall in your gut that allows certain things to go through and it doesn't allow other things to go through. Well, right after exercise, that changes a little bit. So things will go through the gut that aren't supposed to. And what happens is your body starts to identify these things as foreign invaders and starts to develop uh, an immune response to them. And this is what food intolerances are. This is also what food allergies are, but to a much more extreme, uh, in, you know, on an extreme side. Food intolerances are much less severe. Like you're not going to eat something and get anaphylactic shock, but you'll notice that this thing that you eat tends to bother your stomach. And the more you eat it, the worse it tends to get. Um, and so that's what a food intolerance is. Well, post workout is, is like this recipe for disaster. It's like this perfect storm. So you've already got inflammation in your gut. You've already got some, you know, sensitivity. Now, post workout, during the workout, blood is taken away from the gut. In extreme cases, by the way, one of the reasons why you feel like you're going to throw up or shit yourself in extreme 
uh, cases of uh, intense activity or With even being most, scared is because most your people, gut's getting rid of food. Right. And most people know this if you've ever trained really, really hard. You throw through, up. Yeah, you do that crazy leg day, how nauseous you mm-hmm. get. Yeah, your, your body's trying to get rid... It's trying to divert its resources to your extremities because it, you need to perform. So it's taking away blood from the gut and resources and going into your extremities, but then it rushes back in post-workout. Explain, explain, people, explain to people the evolutionary purpose of that. That was something that we talked about with, uh, with him that I thought was really interesting. That is, it, that was the duh. Uh, in, of- in, in cases of uh, fight or flight, um, your body's goal is survival. It doesn't, give a sh- it doesn't care about digestion. It wants to survive, and so what it does is it takes resources away from areas that it can sacrifice and places them in areas that it needs. So your gut is no longer, it's not important at that moment. What's important is, you know, your extremities and being able to move and get the fuck away as quickly as possible. This is why you get a spike in cortisol. It's just stress hormone. People also don't realize that cortisol is an energy producing hormone. So if you have low cortisol, you're feeling sluggish and shitty all day long. Or if you don't respond well to cortisol, you're feeling slow and shitty all day long. So during your workout and post-workout, you get this cortisol spike and you get other hormones related to that that actually cause gut inflammation, change your microbiome, um, and basically make your gut uh, less likely to uh, receive nutrition and digest um, optimally. So the worst time to eat is right after your workout because you've got this perfect storm if you have gut issues. So gut issue plus post-workout, bad combination. But what makes it even worse is what have we been sold? So besides you need to have something after your workout, what else have we been sold? That you need to have something that's fast. Quick digestion. Quick. Right. That's the word. Quick mean, absorption. Yeah. Right. Every, this is crazy. Why it was so crazy to me, I don't know how many people I've seen, especially at the golds that I'm at, where as soon as I get done with my workout, there's you know one to two men's physique or bodybuilder guys who bring their shakes to the gym and as soon as they get done hammering leg day, they're inside there pounding their shake before they even leave the gym. And mm. here's the word. Here, now, this is how opposite it all is because it really all hit me a couple days ago in the sense that, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I learn something, I'll learn it and know it um, and understand it to a certain degree. But then it takes me a little while to chew on it mm-hmm. for it to really impact impact me and for me to really, really get it. So, uh, first off, we are told that the faster something, the faster we can digest something post workout, the better because we're sold that we need to replenish glycogen as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. All of that is false. And the quicker you digest something, the worse it is in that particular state of being post workout. So, if I'm drinking like my Vitargo shake, which is a super, you know, waxy maize carbohydrates and these pre digested protein, protein shakes that are, bragging by how fast they could get absorbed by the body. That's a whey protein, right? Whey protein's big mm-hmm. selling point. It gets absorbed by the body so quickly. You are literally hammering that cell wall of your gut even more and causing even more uh, problems. Hmm. Um, so it's like this, it's like we're literally doing the exact opposite of what uh, we should be doing for optimal health. Not only that, but most of your shakes and bars are artificially flavored, which those artificial flavors, those, those artificial sweeteners, also have a negative impact on your gut. And what's and this is, by the way, this is very true. Uh, athletes that train intensely, a disproportionate number of them have uh, gut issues. This has been well known now in the health industry for a long time. The athletes tend to suffer from gut issues more than the average person. Part of it is that this this you know athletes tend to overtrain more, at least definitely more than. God, the I person. would love to see a study with you know someone also adding their four hundred milligram caffeine pre workout to that mix also because mm. now you're ramping up the CNS before you get in there and then you go train like a motherfucker and then you get done then you do well, that. Think about it this way, Adam. You were a, a pro physique competitor. You're in this world. The harder and longer the workout, the more likely someone is to eat more right Mm. after the workout like Mm -hmm. oh fuck i just had me and you know so-and-so just hammered legs for an hour and a half we're fucking exhausted now we're gonna go eat like 10 pancakes and crush all this food because we need to replenish all this glycogen and protein and whatever uh because we just had this crazy workout or i'm gonna have a massive shake with all these carbs post-workout because i just had this like the heart of the workout the the more they sell you that you need to have this immediate post-workout 
you know, food or shakes. Right. It's a it's a recipe for disaster. It's like a perfect storm. And uh, the crazy thing is now we've all been in fitness for a long time, so we all know people who've been in fitness for a long time as well. I'm not I'm not even exaggerating. Okay, this is honest to God truth. I can't th- I cannot think of anyone. I'm sure there is somebody, but I can't think of anybody that I know personally who's been working out consistently for 10 years or more who doesn't have gut issues. Every single person mm-hmm. I know has gut issues in some way shape or form uh who's been in fitness as long uh or even less than I have. It's like um and it's got to be the combination of the fact that it, that we're likely to overtrain, so that's going to cause potential issues anyway. Mm-hmm. And then now for at least 15 years, we've been really told that right after your workout, you need to eat or take a shake. Yeah. Um, I even see people advocating, some people that we even are friends with will advocate quick digesting, eat some slices of white bread post-workout or this pixie stick of sugar or whatever, these gummy bears. like Chocolate milk. Holy fuck, man. Yeah. Like, what are we doing to ourselves? Yeah. It's- well, here's, I, I also want to backpedal a tiny bit. So, because we did discuss this. If you have no issues with your gut and you have a moderate training session to lower intensity training session, you are not really at risk here. So... No, if you have a healthy gut, I don't think you have. This is not an you issue. Might, yeah, you, you're probably. I don't okay. want. I don't want to scare everybody who's hearing right now, listening right now, going like, "Oh fuck, I can't believe you're eating." And now, like, it's this this huge like you can't eat at. It's not that you can't. It's learning actually just to be more aware of it. And I know people listening right now have to have to have put this together before, right? I've had workouts before where I've trained so hard I'm nauseous. Like I've definitely had those workouts. That is not the workout that I want to go and have something immediately after I lift. And on top of that, it's not the workout. I want to definitely have a shake immediately after my workout. So that's the takeaway from this. Now, it's a normal day for you. You touch some weights. You kind of barely even break a sweat. The heart rate never really elevates that high. You're not you're not ever getting nauseous in the workout. And then you go home right from there. And maybe it's 20 minutes later and you have a nice balanced meal. There's not a problem with that. Right. I mean, uh, like, like Adam's saying, I mean, if you have a health, you don't have any gut issues it's probably okay i mean it's not a big deal to eat afterwards if you have a super super intense crazy crazy workout you might want to wait a couple hours for things to calm down uh before you have your food even if you have a healthy gut just to prevent any future issues but if you have gut issues you should probably wait the people an hour who, or two post workout the people i think of right now that should be really tuning into this and, and trying to uh, evaluate themselves is your crossfitters your uh, obstacle course racers, mm-hmm. your Orange Theory lovers, maybe in season or you know preseason bodybuilders, yeah, yes, bikini. yeah, maybe right, so maybe and then maybe bodybuilders, right? Some of them that really train intensely at your at higher level, right? The average gym goer probably not so much unless you are a circuit training type of person. If you're following like a CrossFit type of mentality, your CrossFitters for sure should be thinking about this. Yeah. Like that's training that that high of an intensity. Because we all know what that looks I mean, most of them collapse after they get that right. is a good example of somebody who does not want to pound a shake right after their wad. And something you want to consider uh, I don't think anybody will argue that nutrition plays a significant role. One, it's one of the top things that will affect your gains in terms of your performance, your strength, your muscle building, uh, and your fat loss, right? Nutrition is by far one of the most important things at the top of the list. But what we forget is our gut health is is connected to that. It's it's not just what you eat. It's also how your body assimilates and uses it. So you can eat the best diet in the world, but if you have issues utilizing the food and nutrients and assimilating them, then it really doesn't fucking matter. So even if you're just a performance-oriented or aesthetic-oriented person, uh, gut health should be very, very important to you. I mean... You're not going to look the way you the, the best you could possibly look if your gut isn't functionally optimally. And uh, one of the first things that I personally notice with myself and with clients that I've worked with in terms of aesthetics is how quickly their aesthetics change when their gut is healed. Like it's ridiculous. Like I know for myself, I'll see my strength go down when I have gut issues and go right back up when I don't. It's a very very quick uh, transition. So. Even if you're thinking yourself like, ah, I don't care about, you know, who gives a crap about that? I'm just going to 
lift weights to build and get lean or whatever. Um, no, this is something you should pay attention to because it's it's a it's it's part of nutrition. However important you know nutrition is, this is part of it. So really, really pay attention to it. But it was mind blowing to me because so much of the things that we considered staples right. of of uh, you know proper nutrition and training, mm-hmm. so many of those things actually did the opposite of what they were supposed to do and pushed us further and further away from this optimal health. And this is just- Well, one that's why of- you always have to reevaluate common knowledge. And that just kind of brings one of those back to light. Like, are we doing this correctly? Is this really effective uh, in those certain circumstances? And, uh, you know, those, those examples, it, it's showing that it's detrimental. It's not It's not even like helping aid, you know, your, your performance. Well, the, so. best, the best advice always, always, always will be, never, no, no advice will ever be better than this is learn how to listen to your body and then listen to your body. Even the advice that we give, as, as, as confident as we are in our advice, if we say something and you do it and you're like, man, this doesn't feel good, don't, don't do it. Um, you know, because I used to do that. I used to fall into that, that, that trap. You know, when I would work out as a kid, I would do something or I'd eat a certain way and it wouldn't feel good, but I'd force myself because... Right. You know, so and so bodybuilder said so, or this other trainer said you so. Thought so that I, was part of the process. Like I have to just punish myself dude, to get to that just level. To listen to your body. If you, you don't feel good doing it, you know, if this if this exercise hurts you in a bad way, or if this particular training modality is setting you going, you're going backwards in performance. Or if we say eat like this and then you eat like that, and I've got indigestion or I don't feel good, stop and and evaluate and listen to your body. You know, uh, your body's pretty uh pretty effective machine in terms of you know telling you kind of directing you where you need to go we just ignore it you know all this talk too about shakes makes me think about something that i've been meaning to tell you guys about too is and i've mentioned it a few times on the show and now that i've been tracking consistently again for some time now is i man i i grossly under eat protein mm. on a very consistent that's a tough one for you it is and and i feel like i have to to say that on the show because we talk so much the other direction because we know that the industry pumps that, you know, two grams, three grams of protein and all these supplement companies are pushing the bars and shakes. So trying to convince you, you got to eat that much. But, you know, when you look at, when you break down mathematically what I have to accomplish every day in terms of the amount of protein I need to take, the amount of calories that I need to consume to build my physique, I under eat. And I have been consistently taking a shake almost every day. And of course, I'm always targeting whole foods, and that's what my ideal way to get it. But I've had to incorporate uh, a shake every single day. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with that uh, at all. Um, I recommend shakes to people sometimes for that, you know, when I coach them for that particular reason. Um, all, the type of shake you use makes a big difference too. Well, though. yeah, no, you, I, I don't think you choose the same ones you used to. I know you don't because I know mm. the shakes that you. Well, no, we. I mean, for some time now, we were courting like three, and I hadn't said anything about it because I was waiting for sure. a, a company that we liked and uh, that we uh, def- not only liked the taste, reputable brand, liked the owners. A bunch of people have been sending me a bunch of stuff to try out, and you know, some of it was okay, some of it I didn't like at all. Um, but I love Organifi. So I've been drinking that shake. That's they, one of the few. That's actually one of the few protein shakes I can tolerate uh, yeah. that don't bother me. In fact, there's a few companies. Um, there's that one. Uh, Warrior Protein is another one, and some other one that I can tolerate. But Organifi Organic Muscle, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. but Organifi is uh, one of my one of my favorite ones. They, I know they sent us a bunch of samples, and we tested them out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's really just again, listen to your body and know. You know what? Uh, you know what you're doing to yourself, and if you have gut issues, um, you know make that one of your priorities because it will make a tremendous impact on your aesthetics and how your body uh, adapts and performs. Today's quad is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. All right, first question is from It's Chris Stacks. What do you guys think of anti-glycolytic training? 
This is an example of when we take a little bit of science and a little bit of information and we try and overcomplicate it to make something sound really fucking cool and new. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know what you know what this is, right? Yes, I do. I had to but I had to go I had to look it up to make sure I understood Anti -glycolytic what the glycolytic training. Dude, yeah. I've so never you heard of that. well, our body has the three your the three main sources of energy, right? That it's using. And then this and the glycolytic is one of them, right? And what happens is you you take something like that, right? So we understand that one of the energy cycles that the body goes through is the, the glycogen, right? So that's your ATP, ADP storage that's using, and then the lactic acid, right? And then, so it's the whole Krebs cycle right, concept. Mm -hmm. And the idea of trying to play with that where you keep your heart rate at a certain rate to make sure that you don't tap into that is the best way for you to maximize... This is where I, I get frustrated with the, the fitness industry and we try and overcomplicate something that is like, you're talking about this, the smallest details there and there's benefits to it. There's, there's science to support what the benefits, but there's also drawbacks of it also, because if you're an athlete who needs to hit their, because the, the idea is that you'd never get into cardio, right? You mm -hmm. never hit your cardio threshold. Right. And they're saying that the, the benefits of it from the amount of muscle that you retain and key plus the max amount of fat that you burn is awesome. And you get these benefits and it's like these short bouts of sprinting, then letting off sprinting, kind of similar to what we've seen with hit or Tabata. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to keep it all sort of fast twitch well, and not really express what's the his name talks of it. Who's uh, the guy, the kettlebell guy, uh, Pavel. Pavel. Yeah, Pavel talks about this, and a few other coaches talk about this. Re you, at the end of the day, basically, it's don't train too intensely. That's really what it is for too long. It, it, it's it's about mm -hmm. not it's about not going to failure. It's about because once you go to failure, once you hammer yourself to a certain intensity, you you get into the stage of glycolytic energy sources, and they're saying you want to stay out of that, and that's the reason why, um, because you get better results, which we agree with. Which we agree with. We always advocate people don't go to failure most of the time and modify their intensity and really pay attention to it because we know as trainers, we've trained lots of people, and we know that pushing that intensity all the time results in uh, worse results than if you don't. If you don't do that, if you leave a couple tank, uh, a couple reps in the tank. Um, CrossFit did a study, uh, a couple athletes, excuse me, a couple coaches that are very tightly knit with CrossFit. And I can't remember their names, did a study on this where they trained people typical wad fashion. And then they took these other people over here and they trained them where they would stop them short of the super high intense, you know, stage. Mm -hmm. And who do you think progressed better and faster, <laughs> right? The ones that did they actually did a study. They did the ones that didn't go super, super crazy hard. Wow. Uh, Olympic lifters. Are, Surprised that like, like came out. Yeah, <laughs> Olympic lifters are the ones you want to look at uh, with this as well. Olympic lifters are excellent at this. They do these long training sessions where they're, you know, m perfecting their form and perfecting their explosive power, but they're not training, you know, to extreme fatigue or past fatigue very often at all. And uh, lots of money and lots of science has gone into Olympic lifting, by the way, more so than almost any other. This is why sport. this is right. why how when I recommend cardio for a competitor who's competing, getting ready for a stage uh, one, they don't do hardly any cardio whatsoever. When they finally start to do cardio with me, they're only doing these short 12, 15 minute bouts. That's it where they're mm. going and then laying off, going and laying off, going and laying off. And it, the very last thing that I would even consider doing is doing these longer bouts of cardio. It, the drawback, though, is if you're an athlete, right? There's there's carryover for somebody who is a basketball player, a CrossFitter, or whatever, by pushing beyond those limits. So for overall training, building muscle, burning fat, staying anti-glycolytic training is what's ideal, and, and we advocate that. But there's also something to be said about the sport or something that you could potentially be training for and the benefits of actually mirroring that and that. So, and a lot of it's really the mental aspect. I mean, if you're, if you're in a competition where you're going to be tested to your absolute limit, mm -hmm. it probably makes sense. I mean, of course you want to go into that event being your most fit, right? Yeah. Conditioned, but you also want to have the mental fortitude to know what it's like and right. to deal with that right. extreme, Intensity, you know what I mean? Because you could have all the fitness in the world. Boxers call it heart, right? You could have all the conditioning in the world, but if you get pushed to that limit and you can't, you can't operate there because you've never been tested and pushed yourself to that point. Yeah, then you're gonna you're gonna get your ass kicked. Well, well it's interesting. I, like you bring up the fact that uh, Olympic lifting, like that, 
honestly has had the only science that that has really dived into like actual like long periods of training and they've had like you know testing the entire way through with that and like you know uh, the the results are tangible because now you're you're applying these uh, these lifts and, 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 you know, you can track and, and trace whether or not, you know, the, their performance gains went up or down. And, you know, like, I think the biggest problem for me with like, just kind of speaking to general, your general average person is that there really aren't like, like there wasn't any of that money that's gone into that type of rigorous right. scientific, you know, in a lab setting, like testing your average individual person. So it's like, Dude, it, what, one of the one of the, that, the no that's a fucking great point Justin. there's no strength sport that has this much science behind as much science behind uh the training as olympic lifting people so here's one of the one of the i hate to say positives but one of the the cool things that have come out of places like the soviet union and communist china is that they dump a shit ton of money on Olympic sports because it's a source of That's national pride. That's why they whooped the shit out of us for like seven <laughs> yeah, years straight. Dude. Well, it's a source of national pride, but then also because it's a communist regime, they own you. Like they literally own you and they control you. So what they would do is they'd take these athletes away from their homes. So you're, here you are. They've now, you know, they've gone to villages and they've searched for, uh, you know, who they think are going to be great strength athletes, whatever. They take these 14 year old kids or these, you know, 17 year old kids. You know, it's a source of national pride. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. We're going to take your kid and they're going to live with us for the next 10 years because we're going to train them to be a champion. And mom and dad are like, thank you. That's great. Plus, we're poor, so yeah. we can't afford it. They take the kid. The kid lives in the training center, Eat, in sleeps, the lab, breathes. eats yeah. what they're fed, trains the way they're being tread, you know, trained. Like in science, the more factors you can control, the better mm-hmm. or more the, the, the better you can predict the, or the outcome is more accurate, I should say. And that's what they did with a lot of these people. And uh, I guarantee we haven't seen all the studies. I'm pretty sure some of them are, they don't want anybody to see because they're probably pretty scary. But a lot of the studies are on strength and they kicked the shit out of us. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, a lot of their coaches came to the US and then we started catching on. But they they did not train to extreme fatigue. That was no. one of the things they did. They, there was no. lots of volume, lots of frequency. Lots of volume, yeah. And they made sure that like it it was based off of the, like the skill and the sessions, like and they wouldn't go to that you know extreme fatigue, that max exertion. Uh, they saved that for when they would compete. And you know that's some, there's something to be said there. You know when we're when we're talking about this kind of stuff, it's like you know you, there's a process in a, in a way. Like if if the best of the best in the entire world are doing it this way, why are we like even discussing this? Yeah. Well, and- this is to me this is where it gets tough for us because we always try and simplify that. This the way we simplify a a deeper question like this is by telling people what we say all the time, which is. You know, we we tell you that you should probably leave two in the tank. That you know you should not be training to to failure in your sessions. Mm-hmm. That intensity is a tool and it should be uh, used rarely. It should be used intermittently into your routines, not all the time. Beast mode, no days off is silly. You're going to get the most benefits if you actually make sure you take care of the body. You're not hammering the fuck out of the body all the time. But when you see something like this, where they they take studies around athletes that are at this level where all these things are controlled there's not a lot of carryover for that for the average person so that's why i don't even like Mm -hmm. talking in deep in depth with something like this because it's like well you know who are who are who's the avatar who are we talking about right now are we talking about a basketball player Mm -hmm. are we talking about the lady who needs to lose 60 pounds who's never worked out right now are we talking about just the average kid who's going to college and you know he's a weekend warrior in the gym and he just wants to be buff like who are we talking to and how much does this really apply to that that's and that's a good point because Mm -hmm. there is some benefit uh besides the mental component which we talked about earlier to muscle hypertrophy for occasionally using uh, extreme intensity, and it's because of the metabolic stress that it places on the body. So, when you look at strength athletes, and I'll place bodybuilders in there, uh, you know, so yeah, weightlifters, powerlifters, you know, uh, all the uh, you know Highland Games strongmen, bodybuilders, and so on, the athletes that tend to advocate for failure and metabolic stress more than the others is bodybuilders, and that problem that is because metabolic uh, stress does stimulate muscle growth as well. So bodybuilders have learned to use that along with it. The problem is most pro bodybuilders, the best bodybuilders in the world, uh, are such genetic uh, freaks in the in the you know department of recovery, 
and are so uh, synthetically supported with their hormones that uh, they can go to failure much, much more often than the average person and not necessarily suffer the negative consequences. But for most people, you're going to get way better results long-term and short-term if you avoid going to failure and stop about one or two reps short of it. The point is this, that this is, you know, taking three, something that we've known for a very long time, the different energy cycles and how the body uses it, putting a spin on it, throwing anti in front of it, calling it a training program. It's like there's nothing revolutionary really about this information. You just remarketed it. Yeah, it's just, right. It's It sounds super scientific because Mm -hmm. you throw glycolytic in there and then you throw anti-glycolytic and then throw training pro and then you throw training program after and it's like, Oh shit, you know, this is part of this is is tapping into that gimmicky side that I don't like. Not to say that it doesn't hold water and it, it doesn't have some truth to it. It does, but this is uh this is the typical fitness industry where we take a little bit of good science and information out there, you know, we throw a little spin on it and we package it and we sell it to the masses because it sounds fucking really cool. It sounds like it's revolutionary and new, but it's really not. It's just something else repackaged mm-hmm. and and shipped to you. It's a little bit of good information. Take it for what it's worth. Learn how to apply, uh, you know, it to yourself and understand that it's not exactly true uh, true for all cases. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from Joe Bega Donuts. Joe Bag of Donuts. Yeah, he's been asking he good showing questions. up. He's got good questions lately. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard or seen T Nation's article on building workouts based on your neurological profile? No, we're just going to head down this direction. <laughs> keep, keep heading this way. I know. Yeah. So, this one sounds smart, on too. That, on that note. Yeah. yeah. So uh, T Nation is one of the few um, publications. I don't know. Can you call them publications anymore? It's all on the internet now. Yeah. Uh, that um, I actually really enjoy m- many of their articles. I do like their articles. Uh, they're you, they're typically on the cutting edge with their information. And you know what's crazy? I feel like we're on the same wavelength many times. You know how many times I've gotten articles sent to me from T Nation that like they just posted today mm. and we like dropped an episode like the week before talking about that exact same uh, you know it's, topic. It is interesting. Yeah. No, I don't I don't think that they're they're copying they're spying us. Spying on us? I don't think they're copying they're us. They're in our forum. I just think that they we're probably think we're copying them. Maybe right? as That's what probably I said. What it is. Huh? I I just and I know some of the authors uh, uh, that, that that write for them. I just think that we're on the same like path of tr- trying to figure out what's right. right. And, the, they're searching for these new, you know, methods and like, you know, questioning a lot of like old Well, when old you dogma, yeah. anti-dogma. when you think about it, it's really not and I know we've speculated on this before. It's actually really not that weird because it is one of the few publications or whatever you want to call it that we all still read because they are on the newest stuff. They tend mm-hmm. to respond to the bullshit. They challenge things. They challenge. Which is great. You know, so they're probably reading a lot of the same studies that we're reading and yeah. they're presenting some of the information the best yeah. they can like uh, like ourselves. And so I now think- Now that being said, I am blocked from commenting <laughs> on, their, on their Facebook. Well, I swear to God. So I don't know what I did to get blocked. They to flagged comment. you as a problem. I think what I did was is I must have debated someone and then referred them to maps or something. You know that might be like competitive. Uh, you with, became with, spam. Maybe because or, I don't know, but somebody was saying something about and I disagreed with the article. Or are you poaching people? Uh, I nah, like that. I'm just being. You know, I'm just. Yeah, yeah it's funny. We got all this figured out in maps. Yeah. So I. <laughs> yeah. So they blocked me from commenting. But anyway, so neurological profile is trying to figure out your how your your central nervous system operates, what state it's in, and then uh, design or tailor a workout around your body. Now, here's mm. the issue I have with this is if boy, you- Boy, the individual variants here. Well, yeah. well, that's yeah. what they're trying to do, right? They're trying to individualize it so you can figure out for yourself. The problem with this is you would need to take a profile test right before every workout because that's yeah, how often- It changes. That's, like how quickly, crazy. that's how quickly it could change. I could literally be in this incredible state neurologically. Like CNS is fresh and strong and you know I'm ready to go have this crazy hard workout and I could literally 
almost get hit by a car mm -hmm. crossing the street, and now it's completely different. Um, so it can change very dramatic. It could change by sleep, what I ate, uh, the thought that I just had. I just ran to someone in the gym who's hot or annoying or whatever. So that's the problem I have with you know basing something on a neurological profile is that your profile changes so yeah. it's the same, dynamically. It's the same thing when you know this other trainer was trying to get me into like lactate threshold and all these different like really high performance tests where they do like CO two max and all these types of things and it's like yeah but that changes all the time you know like it is as cool as it is to like show where your current state is with that right now, there's so many other factors. Like if they're coming in that, you know, the, the results are going to get skewed. Well, this result. is what we talked about with HRV too. Yeah. That's, the, that's the other, I mean, I do want to get somebody on that can all of further it. explain the science. But, right, yeah. right. I mean, in my opinion, all of those kind of fall in the same category. I think it's all very cool. Yeah. I think we, I think we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. I think, uh, it it's will like ultra specific, right? I think it will evolve. I think it will get better. I think we'll we'll know more about it, and I think um, we will refine the science in it. I think where it's at right now, it's tough to dwell on it too much and make make it a priority. This would be a game changer. Out. It would be an absolute game changer if it was real time. Like yeah. if I had yeah. something I could wear. And while I'm working out, it's telling me my neurological condition hmm. and how intense my workout wonder, should be. And yeah, because because Halo, see, you know, you know about that mm -hmm. technology a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting because you know them sort of prodding and, and stimulating certain parts of your brain to kind of pattern these uh, these movements and all that kind of stuff. Like that's interesting to me. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe there will be some kind of device like that that will. Uh, have, be that sophisticated. This but, reminds me of like when people go. There's these companies right now that are doing these um, microbiome tests. So you 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 send them your poop, and then they give you an analysis of your uh, here you of, go, sir here's of your micro poop. of your microbiome. But here's the problem with that because I brought this up to Dr. Ruscio, and he made an excellent point. He's like, yeah, that's a snapshot of your gut at that moment. Mm. Literally, you could eat something, change your diet, whatever. And we know this. I could go from a keto diet to a diet of carbs. My microbiome will change. I could have a stressful day. My microbiome will change. And my poop is showing you what I'm pooping out, but not what's in my gut. A more accurate, you know, again, what we would want is something that's in my gut that can give me real time and tell me what's happening at this, this is moment. This where nanotechnology comes in. Yeah, so all this information is great. It's just it's not useful yet because... We don't have real time uh, results. It's now, like after the fact. Now this all goes back to the good old fashioned listen to your body because when you can become in tune with your body and your body signals and really and what I mean by really listen is stop ignoring. Like if you know, you know how many times I've ignored my body. I'm going into a workout and I mentally I'm like I'm gonna fucking beat myself up. I'm gonna go so hard, mm -hmm. but I'm but I know the signals my body are telling me is like, nah, dude, you need to go easy, but I ignore it. You know what I mean? I got that that attitude like, fuck it, I'm just going to push myself anyway. Mm -hmm. That I do that all, I still do that all the time. And it, you have to become very sensitive to the signals and really pay attention to them. There's nothing yet that's better than that. Now, when we have like real time devices that you can read and see what's happening at that particular moment, man, that's going to be a game changer because then you have objective black and white information right in front of you that you can't argue with and you'll be able to look at and like, like the, um, dude, we're in the Silicon Valley. Somebody's working on that right now. Oh dude. It's like, it. it's like those, uh, uh, those, uh, insulin, uh, readers that people are getting those real time, the uh, continuous glucometers. There you go. Continuous yeah. glucometers. Like all the tests they're doing on that is it's dude, this is going to change the whole landscape. I'm so excited for that kind of technology to come out and it's here. Yeah. It's, it's, dude, it's only a matter yeah, of time. Yeah. But before but everybody be convenient, has one. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like those, it's, it's going to be there. Yeah. Those real, continuous real glucometers have, have taken the. Um, have you spoke that you're on lately? When was the last time you yeah. talked to him? Um, not in the last month or so, but maybe like a month ago. I, I spoke with him. A well, with Josh, I, you know what I told him? Yeah, because there, there's you know certain companies that are actually building this into wearables and, and certain things, and oh, so in the next he's years. like he's going to explode. You should, his company is going to blow up. You should invite him back down for when Josh Trent comes in here yeah, on Monday. Show. That is a great call. This I'm, is, I'm doing that. This is in the next five five years. You're going to see this everywhere, where you're going to be able to measure. Your glucose response to your food in real time, and by the way, this, this, <laughs> the studies that they're doing on these continual uh, glucose monitors is taking the uh, the glycemic index that we normally read mm -hmm. and crumpling it up and throwing it in the garbage. Yeah, yeah. Means, taking a shit on it means nothing. nothing Literally, anymore. means nothing because 
you have two people that can eat a cookie. Well, you saying try this diet, that means jack shit anymore. It means nothing yeah. because it's so individual. Like these studies are showing that one person can eat a cookie and get a better glucose response than this guy over here who ate a fucking almond. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now like, what? What the hell's yeah. going on here? <laughs> so know, it's, uh, it's exciting, dude. Yeah. So and I'm, you know, it's all goes back again. Listen to your body. Um, that will be your best guide in terms of how intense your workout should be or what they should look that like. That being said, it's exciting to see the direction that we're going. Super and exciting. Look forward to it, man. Spam rice and eggs. <laughs> what? Mm, gross. Yeah. Gross. That's good, man. You like that? Fuck Come yeah, on, it's wrapped, in, wrapped in seaweed, dude. That's Hawaiian. I know fast it is. Food, yeah, man. I know. Ugh. I'm gonna have that when spam. I go to Hawaii next month. Nice. Sorry. Go ahead. Doug. All right. <laughs> spam rice and eggs. Question is: What physical body adaptation will you get from steel mace and club training? Oh, good question. Well, I like this. Uh, you know, just looking at Justin, he does it all the time. I can see that it. <laughs> yeah, you it, I think become it, a superhero. I think it develops a large brow ridge. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, big calves. What? Big calves and a thick neck. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. That's Go ahead, testosterone, Justin. Dude. This is your and a poor complexion. Yeah, that's testosterone. This is, <laughs> no. <laughs> this is your yeah. Poor complexion. Skin. <laughs> and big cakes. Yeah, this yeah. is your wheelhouse, brother. Yeah. No, this is great. Like I honestly, um, I love the fact that um, what, how I've used clubs and how how essential they are now in in you know my routine and uh, my off days, especially from hitting um, a really hard session, uh, doing upper body or, or shoulder work, um, just to maintain health and function and, and communication. Uh, all these like little muscles within, you know, the shoulder girdle and just to, to get everything to respond and be active and, and communicate properly. Um, the clubs and, you know, and the mace bell are, are an enormous benefit for me for that. So, um, just to get rotational strength and, and express, um, movement that we are capable of doing, um, you know, it's great to just kind of like do arm circles and kind of warm up and do your thing, but to then train um, to get stronger in that movement is a entirely in different, pro- uh, entirely different process. Um, and you know, you really can build strength in that rotational movement, and um, it's interesting to see how that how that bleeds into now. Well, if you pressing had to, and pulling movements, if you had to give it like a short term or name right like so we talk about hypertrophy or strength building or like that would you say it's like rotational strength is that yeah. what you would say yeah, like just, just to, to, to simplify it like really um yeah it, it, it you you can build upon that and get stronger in um you know rotational movements which you know for athletes like let's just talk about that how beneficial that would be most sports you're going to do it requires your shoulder to go through like all kinds of different almost uh, everyone i can think of right now I can't. i'm trying to th- run through sp- all the sports right now and what athlete would not n- not need that or would that not be conducive right. for you? swimming professional, golfing you professional know. gamers yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what i noticed from the steel mace uh i incredible core activation yeah, especially when you go heavy too. yeah because you're fighting uh momentum mm-hmm. so there's a certain amount of momentum you want to use with the mace, but there's also you have to control that momentum or you will hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it feels like your spine will snap if you're not careful with a heavy weight. And so you're having to brace your core and coordinate your core with your movement, which you can work your core directly to strengthen the muscles and build the muscles for aesthetics. But then you can also work your core in conjunction with uh, movement and momentum, which is more likely how you're going to need your core to function in real life. Well, right. I was decelerating the force so that, you know, it's, it, and this, this applies a lot to sports and life issues where it's like, you know, you get certain forces that are coming at you. How do you stabilize properly? How do you adjust and, and control your body within like all these variables that are coming at you? And so this is one of those ways where it's like, yeah, you're swinging something super heavy and, you know, I'm, I'm creating and generating this force in my core to, you know, sort of get that pendulum effect. Um, but I'm also decelerating that force. So I'm creating it and I'm decelerating at the same time. Which to me, is, I, right away, I think uh, CNS and the benefits of that in comparison to like isolation training or hypertrophy training where, mm-hmm. you know, I can get the benefits of hypertrophy sitting in a isolated position, getting a pump which helps me build muscle, but the overall central nervous system that I'm getting from that, because I'm not having to control it with all these other muscles, like Sal was saying, including Mm -hmm. your core, your entire body, you have to be grounded. Like 
there's a lot more going on and a lot more benefits than just that. And it's just way more dynamic. You know, like how many exercises do you do that are that dynamic? Like where the movement is so fluid and um, like, like, you know, everything else is just so static, uh, you know, in my opinion. And like that just doesn't represent a lot of what I would do outside of just training with weights. So there's a lot of carryover to it. So that's that's another big appeal you for me. You can't get away with bad form either. The no. way you can get away, like somebody can do a bicep curl, like 10 different people can do a bicep curl, all with different mechanical issues, right? That mm-hmm. are that have poor recruitment patterns and it, and it be performed okay. And they get a bicep pump and they exercise and they have no idea anything's wrong. Mm-hmm. If you cannot do a May spell swing, I mean, you're, you'll know right away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll know right away. It, it, it definitely uh, points out your imbalances re- or poor recruitment patterns. It's a good point because honestly, don't even do it if you don't have good shoulder mobility yet. Right. You know, that's something that it, it's like you got to put the work in. It's, it's almost at the higher end level of like a skill exercise that you can even attempt um, you have to put all the prerequisites have to stack up before we even get to that point where we work on this even further. So, well, have you ever seen like a, you guys ever seen like a really big buff? Well, like I was, I was just going to say, ju- have you ever seen Juji and Craig Caperso swing those things? Yeah. It's, it's scary. Almost, they muscle it. Yeah. It's yeah, scary. Well, because it's, it's scary. Well, they just don't watch. understand it either. That's you know? it. You have to, yeah. you have to train it, but it, it reminds me of like when you see like a really big buff dude throw a punch yeah. and they're muscling it or throw a baseball mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, I in, in when I used to grapple, you'd see these these really strong dudes mm. try and I grapple, and they're nice. muscling everything because mm-hmm. they're over applying strength when, when they don't need to, and they're under applying it when they need when they're supposed to apply more. And there's no good coordination with their movement. Uh, maces and club training is very good at teaching you when to apply strength, when to reduce your strength, and when to connect all that together. Mm-hmm. And I could see the benefit of doing the clubs uh, or, the, or the steel mace before your workout, mm-hmm. after your workout, and even potentially in between your sets mm-hmm. to uh, translate what you just did with your workout better. Well, this is a good topic for me, and this is kind of like I've I've tried to, to figure out how to articulate all this stuff because – it is a little bit outside of like a lot of people's thought process of like how to work out, you know, and like, where, where does this fit in? And, um, you know, you're talking about those specific points and Adam brought up the, the CNS training and, you know, there's ways to, you know, you need to train the body to be able to produce like this force and this, a really high, like amplification, a magnitude of force when you need it then. But then you also have to be able to control that force and then you also have to be able to control, uh, you know, your composure and bring that and, and decelerate that force. So, I mean, it's complicated because, and, and this is where we get into like Olympic lifts, right? So, uh, for me to be able to be able to generate enough force to be able to boom, explode, uh, and drive through, uh, and get those ground forces, uh, uh, to drive the weight up and to get enough lift from it. And then loose, be loose, relax. Uh, at so the same I'm, time. Yeah, at the same time. So that just happened. Boom. I, that was like a split second that I applied the force that I needed. Now I have to relax my body and now I have to tense my body in a way that I'm controlled and I have good composure and then I'm getting underneath it and then driving through the end of it. So it's like, it's such a, uh, it's such a, a, a complicated, um, it's a skill. Uh, process, you know, it's a skill that, that, it, you know, it, it, a lot of times it's, it's way outside of people's understanding that just want to like work out and lift weights and, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, build muscle. It's, Plus cr- it's, it's fun. It's crazy yeah. to me that, uh, it's not a staple thing in most athletes' regimen because I feel like there is where it's huge. I mean, if I would, I wish I would have known mm-hmm. a, about the clubs and the mace back when I was a kid playing sports because the carryover for an athlete is huge. I mean, it's great for an average person, no doubt. That's why we, that's why we're fans of it. We talk about it. We use them, uh, and we totally advocate others to try them and see if they can actually perform the movement. And if not fix your imbalances to get to the point where you can control it. But man, for an athlete, to me, I feel like it's a no brainer yeah. well, that these types of tools should be used in your regimen somewhere. Well, look, I've been, I've been in gyms for over 20 years. Okay. Longer actually. Um, that's professionally, but I've been in gyms longer than that just cause I, I worked out as a kid 
and I've seen machines come and go and change at least four different times. Major changes in the way machines look at least four times in that entire period of time. The one thing that has never changed in gyms are dumbbells and barbells because they stand the test of time. Ket, uh, you know, Kettlebells, steel maces, uh, clubs are older than dumbbells and barbells, and they're still around. Like uh, These things have been used by athletes and grapplers and wrestlers in the military in isn't other it, countries is, for a long it, time. Isn't it funny mm-hmm. how hard it is for us as humans to like look outside our own scope? Like I'm 35 years old, so to me, anything that's 35 years old is ancient. Right, if it's thirty five mm. year old, it's ancient to me because yeah. it's only been around for as, it's been around for as long as I've been around, so it's old. Mm-hmm. But and you think about all these cool selectorizer machines and hammer strengths and the latest machine to do this, and that's such a great point to bring that up. These fucking tools, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years. Some of them. some of some of. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a mace a mace training was around in the medieval times. Yeah, right. Uh, that's what they used in war and whatever military training. And then people kept it after. Uh, you know, nobody used a mason war anymore, right. um, but they still kept it because they noticed benefit to their performance uh, in sports and on the field and in wrestling and all these different things. They stand the test of time for a reason. Body weight exercise stand the test of time mm-hmm. for a reason. So uh, if you're listening right now and you're thinking like all oh, these exotic tools, you know, I'm not going to get any benefit from them. Try it. Try it. Get this good is, at them. And it'll this blow is your not mind. an exotic tool. An exotic tool to me is a shake weight, a thigh, <laughs> yeah. a thigh, a thigh master thing, yeah. a the newest gimmick gizmo tool that will come and go. It'll yeah. sell a million, make, make somebody rich. Nobody will talk about it in five years. Mm. This is not that. This is no. something that was before. All, this is what all those gimmicky tools they based it off of yeah. well, what the, the carry over the things they that you try to oversimplify it. Right. Yeah, because it's a complex uh, set of skills that, you know, it's, it's your, your proprioception, your body awareness, like all these factors and your mobility, all these things play a factor in, you know, how effective you are at performing this skill. Mm-hmm. And so, it takes work, man. It takes work um, to sharpen up the There's, skill. You can you can start wherever you are. There's ways to start where you can just, um, you know, you, you start just by holding it behind your head and you just start a nice little pendulum rock. And, you know, you get your body accustomed to it. And, um, you know, you just, you go through the process of like one by one, step by step. There's, there's you know, a way to sort of inch your way to, to get to, you know, a really good looking swing. There's a lot of wisdom. Be cool to put a YouTube series together together on how to get the how to get to a good kettlebell i mean a good mace bell swing yep. because there is there is a lot of little parts oh, yeah i've it. had a bunch of people actually asking when we're going to do a series like that let's so do it there, there's a lot of wisdom in ancient uh you know standing the test of time modalities uh especially when it comes to uh, exercise and training so when you see these cultures you know uh who've been doing these things for you know, hundreds of years or a thousand years, like pay attention. The reason why they've been doing it so long is because they have a tremendous uh, benefit. Um, and I mean, this goes for everything. You know, martial arts is great too. You look at martial arts and you look at some of these old styles and you're like, well, why are they kicking like that? That's not very effective on the street. And it's like, well, it was back then when they were fighting on boats. That's why they stood so low and they kicked the way they did or they had mm. shoes on with seashells on the side and they used them to cut people and that's why they do the, the knife ridge kick or whatever. Like, mm. Pay attention to this ancient wisdom and put it mm-hmm. in context. And these, these, me- these methodologies, the mace and the club, were used by, I know in, uh, uh, in, in India and in the Middle mm-hmm. East, clubs were used by wrestlers. That yeah. was the, that was, and mace were used by wrestlers. Uh, so lots of carryover for grappling, for sure. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com, put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com, put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite, put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up is John Scoville. How much does your sleep posture affect your imbalances and mobility? Oh, a lot. You know, I had to think about this for, for a little while. Like because, side sleeping, back yeah, sleeping, all that. Yeah, so uh, it definitely affects uh, mobility and imbalances because you're in a position uh, and you may be in a certain position for a long period of time. So 
muscles will stretch um, uh, based on that position for you know five hours, six hours, however long you're in that particular position. And that could definitely affect your day to day. However, have you guys ever had this? You just remind me of this. This just happened to me like two days ago. I was so tired. We had this, those days where we just we had guests back to back to back, and I'd been going from five a.m. I came home like seriously in my in my shorts and shirt and everything that I wore that day, and I I never sleep face down. I always sleep on my back, but I just plopped down, and my arms were underneath my chest, and I woke up in a pool of drool, <sighs> and I and my arm everything had gone to sleep, <laughs> so I couldn't you use my even arm. Move your I arms. Couldn't, <laughs> I woke up scared to death, bro. I thought I was something I'm paralyzed. I thought yeah. something happened. I wake up and I'm like, done that I'm smashed in the pool of drool, and my arms are our arms are asleep because I fell asleep on top of them. It was the scariest feeling. I had. I hate that, like I, roll on oh, the floor. I, I roll, I roll to my side, and then I like sat up with my abs, right? Sat up, and then I'm like swinging my arms <laughs> to get the just to, get, to get the blood yeah, flow again. Blood oh, and I'm my like, oh god, I can move my fingers. Thank Dude, God, I'm not dead. That happened when my arms were behind my head and oh. I couldn't move. Them after that, it oh, scared the shit did, out of me. Did you almost call like Katrina? Like, oh, I was, I was, <laughs> I was freaked. Out. I was for a split moment. Right, it was yeah. only a split moment. Did I actually think that I was paralyzed? But there, it did, it did for one moment. Go, I go like, oh my god, what happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> That's happened to me. Where I had to like lift one of my arms to move it because yeah. I'm afraid I'm gonna roll over on it and break it because I couldn't feel it. Um, but what I was gonna say is, uh, sleep. Your sleep posture does affect mobility and imbalances, but not nearly as much as your uh, waking hours do. Because although you may be laying in a position, like the fetal position, or you always sleep on one side or whatever, although you may be staying in that position for long periods of time, you're not connecting to it because you're not activating Mm -hmm. muscles in there. So you're not really developing poor uh, recruitment patterns. I actually had to think very, very deeply about this because I know it can affect you, but I was trying to think like how much can it affect you? And I'm like, well, when you're sleeping, if I'm sleeping in this one position, I'm not connecting to it like I'm walking this way or standing this right, way. Right. So it's so not it's, nearly as bad as being in like a tense position. All yeah. Day. Like sitting at your desk is worse for you than the way you sleep. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Now, that being said, um, if you wake up in pain or whatever, like let, let's examine your your examine how you sleep, examine the quality of your sleep. And then examine your movements throughout the day. Like I know some people have hip problems when they sleep on their side. So they'll have to put like a pillow between their knees. Um, That's a kind of a band-aid solution. Mm -hmm. Also figure out why your hips are bothering you in the first place when it's a position you can get I'm glad you said that because to me, when I ask clients about how they sleep, I'm more interested in their their habits because typically when you lay in bed, you'll do certain things. Like you have the people who will slide one leg up on one side because their low back is tight on the opposite mm-hmm. side or they have to sleep on one side because of their shoulder on the so normally normally your sleep patterns think of it more like this so you have an imbalance a an issue going on and how you sleep that's because you get there cuz you that's the only way you feel comfortable so it's the it's the imbalances that's causing you to sleep that way opposed the way you're sleeping is causing those imbalances. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. That is more common. So I like to ask clients how they're sleeping so I can then it then helps me assess where they probably have some imbalances because they have these habits of sleeping with a pillow between their legs, kicking one leg up on one side, sleeping with their their shoulder up on one side and on the yeah, same side. They always. usually do that because they can't sleep it, the other way. Because the other way makes it tight and uncomfortable. Right. And so it's less of the sleep is affecting the imbalances and mobility. It's that you are in you have imbalances and you have issues and so you sleep a certain way because that's the only way you feel comfortable. Now, I will say this. If you were to, to prioritize all of the factors that will influence your overall health and wellness and fitness and all that. I know you're going uh, to go here. <laughs> if, you were to, if you were to rank them, people would typically rank nutrition or exercise one and two, and then sleep is somewhere maybe third, fourth, fifth, or maybe oh, yeah, way sleep. down. Yeah. But uh, the truth is your sleep is actually the most important factor. It's even more important than nutrition and exercise. And if you don't believe me, you know, you can go for a couple days without water. You can go for a long time without food. But within 24 to 72 hours of complete sleep deprivation, you will likely experience psychosis. That's how uh, big of an impact it has on your health. Not only that, but what we have to consider with sleep is humans are pretty exceptional at functioning 
at yeah, that's a moderate really, level. That's a really good analogy that you just give, and you just you. I think that back up a little bit. That's when you think about that. If you could, five days, right? Five days of no water. Five days of no food. Five days of of no training. Five days of no sleep. Which one of them fucks you up the most? No, well, no sleep will like might even kill you. Um, it's that there were actually some Soviet. When you uh, think of it yeah, like that, it's a go to torture. When you think of it like that, we really do. Uh, oversimplify the importance of sleep. We we it, we look, really do. We if you look, I'll tell you what. The Soviet including Union, myself, I'll be the first one to admit that I used to say, "Fucking sleep is overrated. Yeah. You're yeah. a pussy if you need." You sleep than, when you die. Dude, yeah, you're yeah. a pussy if you need more than two hours dude, of sleep. I'm gonna blow your mind right now. The, uh, there's a, I just I don't know if I posted. I might have posted this study that I just you did read. on the forum. I posted on the forum. Yeah. They did a study, 24 hour sleep deprivation. So they had people completely stay awake for 24 hours. All of them, all of them exhibited symptoms of schizophrenia. Mm. Okay, here's the problem with with going crazy is you don't know. Everybody else does, but you don't know. So all the participants were like, "No, oh I can." God. Every single one of them was like, "I'm fine. I could totally yeah. operate normal." I'm and I fine. feel, you know, yeah, I, he's fine. No, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah he's fine. <laughs> Everybody's fine. They'll, they'll be like, "Well, I'm tired," but that's about it. And it's like the the, the researchers are like, "Wow, they're exhibiting symptoms of." Schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah, but okay, but you gotta. I think you have to unpack that study a little bit because then it's like, how is that any different than if we were to measure all the markers right after somebody did an intense workout? Oh no, no, these are behavioral. Oh uh, no, no, these are behavioral symptoms. Okay. I'm not talking about the brain. Okay, I'm talking about like the way that they're behaving. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, they, I thought you were looking at basic markers. No, like, no, no, well, no, no. Come on, that's not fair. No, no, because, no. This, this is like because it is a temporary stress, and we've actually even talked about mm -hmm. the pot. We speculated that maybe there is some benefits to occasionally depriving yourself of a some, little bit, right? A little bit, and and you got to be very careful. Like, uh, I, you know, like again, like it might be a good idea to not drink water for four, uh, you know, five or six hours because there may be a benefit from. You know, that kind of stress. Food, the benefit doesn't come from four or five hours. It comes from 24, 48 hours. It's all, it's all dependent on the, on the stress. Sleep, we're very sensitive to. And again, like I was saying, humans do such a good job operating at moderate to low levels of sleep deprivation that we don't even realize what's going on. Not only that, but modern life um, is all about, it's all about managing sleep deprivation, if you think about it. Coffee in the morning to wake me up. Uh, some kind of a depressant at night to make me think I'm falling asleep. I got shitty sleep now. Even though I'm in bed for eight or nine hours, the sleep quality is poor. Um, I'm on electronic. We're, it's literally artificial daytime whenever I want. So I, my circadian rhythm's totally off because I'm not experiencing darkness. Uh, we go from bright lights to pitch black to go to sleep. Your body can't change that quickly. Sleep quality is uh, is horrible in people. And here's the other thing. Sleep has been directly connected to behaviors uh, that, are, that are related to the food choices that we make and our activity level. So if you're going on all these diets and you're like, man, I can't. I have such a tough time trying to eat right. It's so hard. This is everybody. I have such a tough time eating right. And I have all these crazy cravings. And, you know, I've gotten lean before, but then I go off the wagon and whatever. Like fix your sleep. And it will make a huge impact on how the ease at which you eat properly. It makes that big of a difference. I really dive deep into this and have done some some more research on this. And it's like it's it's mind blowing to see how big of an impact this has on all of those things: activity levels, mm -hmm. your mood, the way you think, your hormones. It makes a huge impact on your hormones, testosterone. One of the best things you could do to raise your testosterone levels as a man mm. is increase the amount of sleep you have and imp improve the quality of your sleep. So one thing that I advocate now to all of my uh, online coaching clients is a sleep routine. And it's made a huge difference uh, for them. It's made a huge difference for me. And part of that routine includes one hour before going to bed, shut off all electronics and only use candlelight. So mm -hmm. for one hour, you're exposed to just candlelight. Even better would be to match the sun. So if the sun goes down, do this, but that not really realistic for a lot of people. You don't want to be in candlelight from 8 a.m. to, uh, excuse me, 8 p.m. till whatever time you go to bed, but do that for at least an hour. Drink something warm, uh, you know, right around that time, warm tea, tree, warm pee. water, yeah. whatever. Um, do some either meditative stuff or stretch or things that bring the body down. Whatever's stressing you out or you're anxious about, Write it down 
so that you can write it down and forget it. So you can say, okay, this is what I'm stressing about. Mm. Fold that piece of paper up. I'm going to look at this sometime tomorrow. Forget it. Um, make sure your room is cool. Uh, don't sleep with clothes on. That's actually been shown to uh, help us uh, sleep better. And uh, make sure you don't have distractions in your room. Black out your room and go to sleep. After doing this for a couple weeks, you'll get once your body gets acclimated. A lot of that stuff, though, out. to me is the final progression to get to that. And something that has been a game changer for me, and I've said it a bunch of times on this show, is Brain FM. Is using that as a tool to help me get to that state. Because it's really tough for a lot of us type A personalities that are go, 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 go every single day. We're hammering it away. And then all of a sudden, I need, okay, Sal told me, you know, Coach Sal told me I need to improve on my sleep. But your and, head's still spinning. Yeah, but my head, my head, you can't just turn that off. Like if you're, if you're it's a hard maniac sure. like I am, like you just don't go from, you know, full throttle all day to, all, okay, it's 10 o'clock at night. It's time to shut down. Like it takes mm-hmm. a while for my brain to wind down nothing has helped me more than and i do the by fire i turn off the the television i do the i've got the blue light blocker i got all those things nothing helps me get to that state mm. than throwing some brain fm in my ears and listening to that for about a half hour and doing my box breathing yeah. Yeah, if I, I box breathe and I listen could echo to- that it's definitely the breathing and you know i started out with brain fm kind of helping me get into that place mentally but also you know really peering into to my caffeine consumption and like when to to shut it off and make sure like i had to go even scale back to where like i i don't drink anything past like one o'clock now because i was going you know too far to where it would carry into uh, at night where I, I was still you know fighting that 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 inner voice that was constantly you know going off in my head and then you know one thing too like and I know like it, it's been cool just just kind of picking uh, uh, Jessica's brain, uh, Sal, she was talking about like walking super, super slow. Oh, meditative walking. Yeah. Which, yeah she taught me that. Uh, that. I thought that was a great idea. She taught me that. So so meditative walking, I, I, I it's, it's great when it's your girlfriend because you can't make fun of her because you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, get a, we'll get an argument about it. So I'm just going to try it. And it's fucking legit. Like mm. what you do is, and we've been, we've done this a few times at night because meditation is all about just putting you in being, being present and making you the observer, right? That's all really what meditation is, is trying to do. You know, focusing on your breath is one technique where you're just constantly bringing yourself back to your breath. Cause what's that, what that's doing is it's making you present. Well, slow walking is doing that where you're taking literally you're doing super slow motion, I- intricate steps. And you're like, slowly hitting your heel on the floor and rolling forward on your foot and coming up on your toes and then slowly lifting the back foot and bringing it forward. And all you're doing is trying to go as slow as you can and wa- and just focus on your steps each time. And you do this for like 15 seconds. It's a very effective technique yeah. for making you present. It sounds really silly. Well, it sounds silly, but you think about it and it it like forces you to really be like present in that in that moment and plus it, it's 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 literally like, like almost like turning a knob on your brain to like you know operate like at that level and like start you know kind of winding 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 down and it's just it just physically happens the more you focus on it well i, I find myself doing it and then my mind will want to think like think about something and my steps will speed up Mm. So I have to like hurry up and okay, I got to focus back on my. So it's really good technique because you're moving. Yeah, you know why it's you're tangible. Doing it. That's why I like. I it. haven't done it that super slow, but I was getting lots of benefits from when I told you guys I would walk the dogs barefoot every night. So I would just take my shoes off and then just. I would pay attention to my feet gripping the ground, yeah, very you know, so, so I would touch my mm-hmm. feet and then I would grip it and then touch again and grip it. And then I also, I know that I have an anterior pelvic tilt, so I would activate my glutes and kind of roll my pelvis under and I would be walking that way. So I'd be, my core is contracted, my pelvis is tilted forward. I'm like concentrating on how my feet are grabbing and gripping the ball. And I wasn't walking that slow, but just being that mindful of my deviation that I was trying to activate and, and correct while I walk kind of slow and touching the ground and gripping it with my toes would just bring me so, so present, dude. Yeah, what well, you have to... Sounds silly. I know it does. It's crazy because the more we learn about this, the more our modern ailments start to make sense. Like, hmm. uh, I've talked about this once or twice, I think, on the podcast where the most common uh, complaint now in uh, therapists and psychiatric offices and psychologists' offices now is anxiety. Anxiety, there's actually this huge epidemic where people are suffering from 
uh, ex- extreme anxiety and uh, benzos and SSRIs are, are being prescribed for them because people are experiencing these, these, these super anxious states. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because we're in these moderate levels of stress all day long mm-hmm. and then we don't experience the the most recuperative thing that we do all day long, which is sleep. I mean, and the most anabolic thing. Let's also be accurate here. Nothing you do all day long is an anabolic as sleep. Sleep is totally anabolic. That's what that's what happens when you sleep. Is it considered more anabolic than working out? Working out is an anabolic. Well, working out well, sending the signal. Po- yeah, post work. Yeah, sleep is when shit really yeah, you know, when, really goes down. Puts it together. Sleep does a lot of things. While you're sleeping, your brain is pruning synapses it doesn't need. It's actually becoming more efficient at the thought process. It's solidifying uh, memories and uh, there's a lot of other mysteries that we don't understand about sleep. But nonetheless, uh, what you know, we're in this constant low level or moderate level of stress all the time, which means we have certain hormones that are being released, like cortisol, and our body stops responding to cortisol very well by downregulating receptors and you know and whatnot. So what ends up happening is we crave things that cause a cortisol release, uh, and that affects our diet as well. So besides caffeine, which kind of mimics cortisol. Well, uh, we're going to crave sugar. We're going to crave sweets. We're going to crave foods that cause a dopamine release that are so foods that are extremely palatable, like processed foods. So, you know, not having good sleep and not having adequate sleep is going to ruin your, your diet. It'll make it very difficult for you to eat because the signals that your body is sending you aren't based on uh, necessarily on nutrition. They're based on survival at that particular moment. And that means you're going to make decisions that feel good in the short term, like, oh, I feel, okay, I'm so tired. I feel so shitty. Oh, that coffee made me feel better. Or, okay, that donut, I feel so good eating this donut. But in the long term can cause this cascading, uh, you know, uh, you know, events that cause poor long-term health. So no joke, I'm not exaggerating here. If you focus on your sleep and make that a priority, you will find, uh, many of you will find that it becomes a lot easier uh, to eat properly. So, and with that, Go to mindpumpmedia.com and check out our 30 days of coaching. It's available for free. It's a plethora. It's a treasure trove of information. Mm, a panacea. A panacea of information. Um, absolutely for free. It's a bunch of. For anybody. Those. Uh, you go on there and you register and you'll get all you get that. A, a squeeze heart for that one. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you want to ask us a question uh, that we answer in an episode like this one, the place to do it is on Instagram, the page to do it on is Mind Pump Media. You can also find our personal Instagram pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal, Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.